Okay, hello, welcome everybody to our Amherst community chat for Tuesday. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Brianna Sunred, communications manager for the town. We'll be holding these short live chats like this on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon for the next couple of weeks. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded, so please refrain from asking any personally identifying health questions. To ask a question today from the Zoom application, press the Q&A button, type your question into the box, or you may raise your hand through the Zoom application or by pressing star nine on your telephone. So today we have town manager Paul Bockelman and joining us is assistant town manager and director of conservation and development, Dave Zomek. Welcome to you both. Hi, Brianna. Hi, Brianna. Thanks for joining us. Um, we do have some questions lined up today and we invite um, our attendees to also chime in with some questions. But before we do that, just giving a chance for any updates. Mm. Paul? <clears throat> sure, so there are two things uh, that I want to update you on. One is, um, the governor extended his order uh, for essential businesses only being open and that this stay at home advisory uh, from May 4th until May 18th. And at the same time, he set up a um, reopening committee uh, that includes three municipal officials uh, among a lot of industry people and public health people. And they will sort of set the parameters for what it's going to take to reopen uh, our businesses and our, and our economy uh, going down the road. They are taking this in sort of chunks of time. So the next chunk, this next chunk is from May 4th until May 18th. And before May 18th, the governor, I'm sure, will declare uh, whether it's gonna be extended again, um, or if that it will actually start, we'll be able to start opening on May 18th. Uh, the other thing that they did, um, the governor issued a requirement that if you cannot properly social distance outside, that you need to wear a face covering um of some sort and you know i always have mine this i got several because they're they're cloth masks that you can put on um you need to you know as i've heard uh, our health director julie fetterman talk about this a lot you need to have multiples so that when you finish you take them off without touching the cloth you take them home you wash them with soap and water or throw them in the laundry and then they're good to go so you need a few of them and along those same lines, so in, we're going to make sure help people get copy, get get masks, and we can talk a little bit about that later as well. So thanks, Brianna, for hosting this. Thank you. Thanks for the update, um, Dave. Do you have any updates from your realm? I see that you're in town hall right now. I am in town hall. I'm in the town room. Um, beautiful day here in Amherst. Um, I think the only update, and we might get into it a little bit more with permitting, is you know, folks should know that um, to the best of our abilities, we are moving forward on you know, a variety of different permitting um, uh, projects uh, through conservation, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Planning Board. So um, we're, we're doing our very best and staff is doing a terrific job uh, working with uh, those regulatory boards and committees to to keep business moving through through town and flowing through the process. So we can talk more about that in a few minutes. And if there are questions, happy to answer those. So, so Dave and I are both in town hall and we're on different floors. You can sort of tell by the windows, um, but I haven't even seen him today yet, although he's been working. So we are keeping our social distance um, by floors actually today. We've been in multiple Zoom meetings today, but- That's not true, that's true. <laughs> And I'm in the North Amherst Satellite Office of That's Town right. Hall. So, uh, well, you mentioned permitting, and we, we did have a question come in um, asking, you know, is Town Hall open for me to apply for a building permit, or how do I get a building permit for the project I want to do? Yeah, it's a great question. And so, building on my earlier comments, so we are absolutely open for for that kind of business. So if people need um, conservation permits, building permits, uh, zoning board of appeal permits, uh, if they need to contact uh, the licensing, the board of license commissioners, uh, staff are actively working behind the scenes. So you can email or call any one of those departments and somebody will respond to you and, and guide you through the the, the process. Um, our building, um, um, our uh, permitted operator, Jennifer Mullen, is, is um, uh, in the building for kind of staggered shifts, uh, but she will respond to emails and, and uh, voicemails as well. So please, uh, I encourage people, if you have projects, whether you're working on 
you know, a deck or a, a new building project in town, um, please, you know, contact somebody on, on my staff and they will help you through the process. And of course, the boards and committees that oversee those, those permits and those, uh, those processes are, are meeting remotely. And I'm sure that people have seen those advertised on the town website. So that would include the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Planning Board, the CONCOM, and, and uh, those, uh, the, the Historical Commission, for instance. And in, in the contact information for um, our permit administrator and the various staff is on, on your web pages. Correct. Okay, great. So we, we have a question here about what's happening with Hickory Ridge. Is that gonna be opened up to the public or any updates on that project? Yeah, well, that's a great question and, and I get it a lot. Um, as people know who might be listening, we've been working on the Hickory Ridge project for a couple of years now. We you know, have had very productive conversations with the owners uh, who are out of New Jersey. Um, as has been reported and, and has gone through the, the town council process and many other processes in town, we do have a, an active purchase and sale agreement with Hickory Ridge. Um, um, we have not set a closing date on, on Hickory Ridge yet, uh, but we're hopeful on that, that it will proceed. Uh, the town is still doing its due diligence, uh, looking at um, survey work, uh, assessing uh, buildings, um, looking at uh, 21E, which is uh, making sure that the, the property is clean, uh, looking at the title, all of those things are happening now. Uh, and we, we hope to be able to close uh, sometime in, in 2020 in this year. Um, so we don't own it at this point. So we, we can't give permission to be out on the property. Um, I know that the, the company that owns it has taken some more proactive steps to kind of safeguard their property because there were a lot of people golfing on it earlier in the year, but I think they've blocked off the parking at this point. So again, we're hopeful. Um, and really it's still private property at this point. So that's all up to the company, what they allow or don't allow on the property. It, it's, a, it's a stunning piece of land and really important to the Fort River watershed. And um, so we're really hoping that we will move to closure on it. But there, uh, Dave has been working this tirelessly for a long time. So he'll, we'll get there. I'm, hope, I'm very hopeful for that. I'm going to take this quick chance to remind those who just join us to please uh, put your questions in the Q&A feature via Zoom. And we'd also love to hear from any of you who want to come in and ask your question live. You can raise your hand in the Zoom app or press star nine um, from your telephone. So next question is, what is the most recent updates for the planned playground at Kendrick Park? Um, happy to take this one if you want, Paul. So sure. We have a, um, an interdepartmental team working on this. Um, it's a great project. We're very supportive. We got a very large grant from the state, a $400,000 grant to uh, go with CPA dollars to build this uh, playground, wonderful playground in, in the uh, kind of in the central part of Kendrick Park. And um, so the team of DPW staff and planning staff and LSSC staff have been working for months, uh, getting input from the public. They've held a number of public meetings. Uh, they've been gathering input uh, online. In fact, I saw something on Facebook this morning where somebody from Amherst had put out, you know, hey, here's another chance to, to give input to the plans. So those plans have been posted online um, and, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're we're under a pretty strict timeline from the state to get that design done in the next about 30 to 45 days. So uh, anybody who wants to give input, you can find that project uh, on the town website and send in your comments. Uh, Nate Malloy in the planning department is, is kind of gathering those and providing them to our team, which includes the engineering staff from DPW and, and the um, recreation folks from LSSC. And, and that website for people who are interested is amherstma.gov slash Kendrick Park 2020. And that's where all the updates and uh, feedback um, tool can be found. Okay, uh, we have another, another question um, regarding the rail trail. Um, rail trail seems jammed nowadays every time we, we try to use and it seems 
tough to achieve social distancing. Can the town do something about it? Yeah, well, that's a great question. And, and uh, I've certainly been out there. I know Paul walks a lot. I walk a lot and bike a lot. And, and both of us visit our trails um, throughout the week and particularly with this nice weather. Um, I was just out on the bike path, the Neurotic Rail Trail for two, two and a half hours on Sunday, which was a very nice day. Um, so first of all, the rail trail is a state facility. It's not a town facility. So we don't have legal jurisdiction over the rail trail. Um, the parking areas uh, are, are on state property. So we have a good working relationship with the Department of Conservation and Recreation, DCR. They're the state agency that uh, oversees and manages those facilities. And we've, we've had communication with them about their facilities here in, in the Valley. Um, but at this point, they've chosen not to close those parking lots. Um, honestly, on Sunday when I was there, which was late morning, um, what I found uh, was that the parking areas were actually very crowded. But once you get out on the trail, and again, I was on a bike, um, there, was, there was a considerable distance between the users. So um, for me personally, professionally, I did not see that as a, as a major issue. I think I, what I saw was uh, I saw walkers giving a wide berth you know, six feet, minimum six feet, 10 feet, 12 feet as they, as they uh, uh, passed by each other. I saw a fair number of people wearing masks, both walkers as well as bikers wearing masks. So I think there are ways to, you know, uh, achieve a level of, of greater safety and comfort out there um, if people are uh, interested in, you know, uh, during this time, a lot of people do want to get exercise. So I would encourage people to go at different times, go early in the morning, uh, go on some of the overcast days. It's gorgeous out there. There's lots of wildlife and birds, um, but don't pick those banner bluebird days when there's gonna be a lot of people on the trail. The other thing you can do is uh, folks can choose trails that um, are a little bit off the beaten path. If you don't wanna go on the bike path, look on our website at our trail map. We have 80 miles of trails in Amherst alone and try to select a trail that maybe you haven't gone on before or is a little you know, out of the ordinary for you or, or on the outskirts of town. And you'll probably find very few people on those trails. So it's, it's interesting, I was talking to Mike Morris, our superintendent of schools, and he and his kids have a project where they're trying to find a trail to hike in every community and they keep going farther and farther out. They were in Hatfield, I think, um, last weekend. And it, it's, it's, it's really helpful because his kids like to look at maps. They get to look at a map. They use an app while they're, they're hiking and they're discovering new places. They, you know, they don't go really far because the kids aren't that old, but um, it's a really great family activity. Um, for, the, for the rail trail, you know, I think what, what worries a lot of folks and this, you know, we think about this too, is as you're biking or something that, you know, as you swish by somebody, you worry about the sort of you know, jet stream that follows them. And that's why I think the idea of wearing a mask whenever you can is going to be um, suggested and, or required by the, by the governor's order. Um, that being said, if you have an underlying medical condition um, or, and you can't wear a mask because of that, you, there is an exemption from, this, from the governor's order that says you don't have to wear a medical mask, uh, a mask if you have an underlying medical condition. Yeah, and just to build on the, the, what Paul was talking about with trails. So that's a great example with, with Mike and his children. So it's a great opportunity to, to study maps, to look at maps, learn how to read maps. Um, we have maps on our website, of course, uh -huh. uh, for our trails. Um, the Kestrel Trust also uh, on their website provides a number of trail options in the 13, 14 towns around Amherst. And then there's a wonderful app, a free app uh, that you can get on your phone called All Trails. Uh -huh. That uh, provides you trail trail information for any any town, any location you're 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 currently at. So, lots of options there to get off the the well worn trails like the rail trail. Now, those are great tips. Um, so, just there was an, an, another question about what do you do when you come upon somebody on a trail, mm -hmm. and I think. Some of that is just common sense. Again, I was out at Amethyst Brook. I've been out there a couple of times, a very popular dog walking spot and hiking spot in Amherst. And I found people to be very, A, responsible, 
um, people will pause um, uh, and get off the trail six, eight feet, 10 feet and allow you to pass. And I think there's a real understanding that people don't wanna go close right now. That's not in, in everyone's best public health. So I really found people responsible and, and open to allowing you know, a, a family group to pass by or whatever. And I think if people think about that and have your head up and be looking, anticipating, oh, there's some hikers or there's a runner or there's a mountain biker, you know, you need to anticipate a little bit more than you did pre-COVID. Um, oh, you know, this trail is only six or eight feet wide. I need to maybe step off into the lower underbrush here and give someone a chance to pass. So Dave, thinking about trails, has anything changed with uh, leash laws or is there information that you can share with folks about that? Uh, nothing has changed with regard to leash laws. Um, but what are the rules for leash for dogs on the trails? So the, the rules in Amherst um, are, are pretty clear and have been consistent for a number of years. So uh, the Conservation Commission has authority over our trails and our conservation land. And um, they have promulgated regulations that basically state that um, for most conservation areas, dogs need to be on leash at all times. The only two areas where dogs can be off leash are at Amethyst Brook and um, the Lower Mill River, which is down near Mill River Recreation Area. And those two areas, they can be off leash from dawn to 10 in the morning. So um, that's really, uh, those are the only two off leash areas. We're specifically asking people not to have their dogs off leash at Puffer's Pond. Dogs on beaches, even though those beaches are closed right now, we can talk about that in a little bit, but dogs on beaches really are kind of a recipe for, for problems to happen. Um, we see a lot of dog bites, a lot of dog-dog interactions, uh, dog people, dog children interactions that are not very positive. So the commission really does not want people uh, swimming with their dogs in Puffer's Pond. You can go upstream or downstream on the Mill River or the Cushman Brook, and a lot of people do that, but not right at the two beaches at, at Puffer's. Can you, can you update us on where the dog park is too? I know that that's been a, a really active uh, project and you've been taking, putting a lot of time into that too. Oh yeah, it's very exciting. I mean, our dog park task force um, uh, chaired by Jim Pistrang has done a wonderful job. So the project just uh, went out to bid and we got the bids back about 10 days ago. And um, given the, the bidding climate, we think that we uh, have, have a, a bid range that is, is conducive to moving forward. So we're doing our internal due diligence on those bids checking references and, and similar processes that we have to go through before we award a contract. But we're pretty confident that we'll be awarding a contract here in the next two weeks uh, mm -hmm. to, be under, to be under construction this summer. So um, we've, uh, again, a uh, great team. Uh, DPW has really helped us out, the engineering staff, uh, the, uh, Nate Malloy, the planning staff, and, and the committee has been fantastic. We've gotten a lot of um, a lot of private donations. We're still looking for donations. If anybody would like to give to that project, by all means. But I, I think we're over forty thousand dollars in donations. Wow. Um, so we'd be under construction later this summer. We do have to navigate. We do have a rare species out on the old landfill where the project will um, take up about two acres of that fifty-five acre site. We've got a rare species out there, uh, which is called the grasshopper sparrow. So we'll have to do some, some inventory work to see if the grasshopper sparrow is there this summer. If it is, that just means we have to wait until after they finish breeding and then we can construct the park. If there aren't any grasshopper sparrows, then we will uh, commence construction probably in July. And it's about probably a three month process to, to complete it with uh, paved walkways, ADA walkways, shade structures, an entrance pavilion, parking for about 20 cars. So it's, it's really exciting. The task force has been at this for about two years, I think. So, and many people on that task force have advocated for it for many, many years. How can people donate if they are interested in donating, Dave? Well, um, the town uh, can accept gifts. Uh, and we do have a special account, a dog park gift account. 
um, and a number of people have made uh, small, medium, and large, some quite large gifts to that account. And that money is then pooled with money we have from the Stanton Foundation, which is the, uh, uh, the private uh, foundation that has funded uh, about $250,000 worth of both design and, and construction on the project. We also were successful in getting some CPA money. So all of those, all of those sources will come together and, and hopefully by the fall, late fall, we'll have a beautiful new dog park. We, we do have to work on when it will be open exactly because you do need to let the grass grow and really, really get hold before you let all those people and all those dogs out mm -hmm. on it. So that'll be a little bit of a nuance. Uh, whether it opens officially, we have a ribbon cutting say this fall and it officially opens in the spring, we'll have to see how that goes. But it's, it's coming. Great. So we, we have a question here, if, if there's, uh, what's the latest on business in Amherst? So I can take that one. Um, so last night, the executive directors from the Business Improvement District and the Chamber of Commerce presented to the town council uh, the, a, a plan for uh, re the resilience of bringing, bringing resilience back to Amherst um, once we get through this crisis. And to uh, pr address some of the needs for our local businesses to make sure that they can survive this COVID-19 pan um, pandemic. And um, so they, I would encourage people to look at their, their slides that they put together to, if you wanna watch the, the presentation that they made, they did an excellent job. One of the real points I wanted to bring about this, I didn't mention it last night, I should have. Um, one of the things that's really a hallmark is that the two executive directors for the bid and the chamber are working very tightly together and they've really unified the two sets of business communities. The, the business improvement district is a geographical area const, you know, basically constrained to the downtown and the chamber is Amherst area wide. Um, and they've really been working together as a team to recognize the importance of reviving business in the town of Amherst thinking about the new ways that business might, might be conducted, looking at ways that we might have to introduce social distancing uh, in our restaurants and things like that. So um, they have, I, I really give a lot of credit to uh, Claudia and Gabrielle for taking the lead on this. And um, they have boards who are very supportive of the work they've been doing. Uh, they're looking at, you know, parking issues, um, permitting issues, how do we, how do we, uh, position ourselves so when businesses start to look forward to reopening or relocating that we're the community that they want to relocate to. And in that recording, if people do want to see the um, presentation should be up online um, on Amherst Media's website or YouTube channel. Yeah, just, you know, you might want to talk about this, Brianna, because one of the interesting things about th these types of things, but also all of our meetings are now when they con are conducted in Zoom are automatically recorded. We record them all and then we can put them on our YouTube channel and people can see almost any meeting. So it's not just the meetings that Amherst Media covers now. It's pretty much all meetings. So that's one of the advantages of using a Zoom technology. There's a lot of disadvantages, but one of the advantages is everything's being recorded now and thrown up on, on YouTube, which is fantastic. Yeah, we, we've seen a big increase in, in even the meetings that were traditionally broadcast or recorded. Uh, we're seeing a, a huge increase in public participation in the sense of people actually tuning in live to the meetings. Um, so that's been one of, the, one of the silver linings for sure. So let's see. I, I think we wanted to leave a little time to talk about Amherst masks for all and mm -hmm. how people can request a mask if they need one for themselves or their family members and um, also sign up to sew masks and or donate materials if you have them. So we, we have uh, put that up on our website for the community participation officers. It's amherstma.gov slash get involved. Uh, there's a web form there that you can go on and request a mask um, for, for yourself or a family member or neighbor, and we'll coordinate with you to get that, um, get that to you. You can also sign up to sew masks and um, donate any materials that you might have, and we can coordinate pickup um, and material distribution. So that's something that's up live now. We've already had um, 
over a dozen people sign up on the form for either requesting a mask or to donate or to volunteer. So we would encourage you to, to go there if you um, are in need of a mask. Yeah, that was amazing because it just went up yesterday, late yesterday afternoon. So they have that many people already signed up. It's fantastic. It's really important because these are for folks who might not otherwise have access to a mask. And now that you're required to have a mask to enter stores or anything like this, we don't want to have people who don't have access to a mask to be deprived of being able to go to the grocery store or um, go to any kind of uh, facility. We want people to have the access. So the intent of this is for those communities who might not otherwise have access to a to a mask and so everybody's it's going to be a, a real group project and a community-wide project so just credit the community participation officers for pulling this together and uh, rolling it out so quickly and again the the website's amherstma.gov get involved and you can also find it on our home page news item there's a link to it there if you're interested so are there any, um, any things you wanna leave the community with before we wrap up today that you didn't get a chance to touch yet, either of you? I have one thing I just wanna mention. Um, next Monday at 5.30, uh, the interim, uh, Sonia Aldridge, our, our interim finance director, and I will be presenting uh, the budget information for FY20 and for FY21. And these will be projections of our, what we anticipate to be our revenues and expenditures for those two years, as much as we know at this point. And um, so we will, it, it'll be a group meeting that will include the town council, the board of library trustees and the school committee. And so it won't be a really long presentation, um, but it'll be a lot of information. And we'll set the stage for the decisions that we have to make coming forward as we move forward making decisions about the budget. And just as a spoiler alert, it's not a pretty picture. Um, it's gonna be a difficult year and um, we just want to help. We want to be as transparent as possible with the information that we have at this point in time. Thank you, Paul. And I imagine we'll we'll be getting materials added to our budget web page, and um, so hopefully you can follow along. Yeah. Um, Dave, do you have any parting words? I think the only thing I'd say is is something I, I touched on earlier, which is you know town staff. I know Paul has said this before, but through all this, I've been just so impressed across the departments with with the dedication commitment of town staff. They want to be here. They want to serve the, the residents of Amherst. They want to work with their committees and boards and they wanna get government back up and going. We realize how important uh, you know, government services are, government contracts are. We're trying to, as I said, we're trying to get contracts out for dog parks. We're trying to finish the Grove Park spray park. Uh, and the, I've just been so impressed with the creativity mm -hmm. And, and the, you know, people are very emotionally attached to their work here in Amherst. And, and that's, you know, you, you don't see that in every community. You don't see that in every job workplace, but Paul and I see it every day. Uh, people want to be, uh, be here and, and they want to work. And so we will do everything we can to, to, to bring them back at a time and in a safe environment. Uh, based on the, the, the guidelines from the governor and, and our, our health director and others. So mm -hmm. um, I think people should know that people are here, they're, they're working remotely, they want to serve the residents of Amherst. No, that's, that's a very important reminder. Um, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So I just want to reiterate too, if, if there's something you heard today that you want to follow up on and get more information, or you just have a question, you can always email us at info at amherstma.gov. You can reach the town manager's office at 413-259-3002. Um, you'll either get Angela or Jen, two of the community participation officers. They're, they've been there. Um, one of them has been there every day to, to help. So don't be afraid to call us and um, we'll be there to pick up the phone. So I want to say thank you to you both. Thank you, Dave, mm -hmm. for joining us as our special guest. We will be um, meeting on Thursday at noon with Health Director Julie Fetterman. So same same link, same phone number. We hope to see you. We hope to see you there, and we'll be putting this recording up on our COVID nineteen playlist. So stay safe, stay healthy. Thank Talk you, Brianna. Have a nice Bye, day. Everybody. Mm -hmm.